from medicinal to libation, it's the f***ing mint julep or the julep. Right, here we go, very simple. It's a part of history. It's actually a big part of history. Uh, if you study the julep, you're studying really Europe. Half of Europe was controlled at one point uh, by the Moors, okay, and that was a Muslim people. And the rest of Europe was controlled by the Christians. And basically the julep was a, a Moorish Arabic uh, creation, and it's actually, the word is actually julep. And it's been around for a long time and it's actually something to do with things like rosemary and uh, camphor and various other herbal remedies. But then uh, later on, around the 18th century, when it started coming over into the USA, it became a lot more of a libation. And to the point that there was actually a really great little poem, and I like this poem because it's actually rather fitting. In 1796, the, the, the poem goes, Nymphs in the garden picking tulips, while maids are preparing cordial tulips. So, let's do a bit more into it, shall we? So, mint julep, a little bit more of history on it. Everybody knows the mint julep as having this, and coming in this, one of these. Actually, originally, it wasn't. It was most likely in glass. Right, but then around the 1820s, somebody started making these and the julep became really big. And another one as well is the, one of the most famous things that goes with it. The julep strainer. Okay, and you wonder why all these things are together like so. Well, it's actually really quite simple. Um, men, big burly men in the 19th century, I think half of them were gay anyway, would have nice big, you know, big beautiful beards. All right, and it was like the most important thing in the world to make sure your beard was perfect. Now, one of the things that people used to think was that this was designed to stop your teeth being, you know, hurt by the cold. Actually, it's bollocks. It's all about the beards. So they used to put their drinks together in these little julep cups, and then they used to put this over the top, like so, and then drink. All right? So if you were really, really rich, you had your own little private one kept on you and otherwise bars used to try and provide it. Nowadays it's actually used as a tool for making drinks, mainly stirred drinks, and it is actually rather useful, you should have one. And then around the 1850s, a Kentuckian uh, member of government called Henry Clay brought the julep to DC. So it ventured beyond the South and into the rest of the USA. However, just before then, it was still really only for the rich because you needed really ice. But then ice became such a, a big widespread product that everybody was starting to have it. And the julep really started to come into its own. And it became more really for the USA, right? It's a real big thing. It, it, the mint julep, yes, it was originally from the Middle East and then from Southern Europe, and then over into the United, the United Kingdom, and then over into the USA. But the USA really made it into their own. And now we're gonna start going into the mint julep and how I make a mint julep. And one of the most important thing is keep this in a fridge. It's very useful, okay? Keep it nice and cool. So here we go. Get your tin, keep it in the fridge. Get some mint, all right, nice big bunch. Now I have a particular bar spoon, obviously, because any retentive that I am. This is a uh, Salvador Calabresi bar spoon, um, and it's actually for juleps, because this is actually really useful, all right? And you'll understand in a minute. Now get yourself a good ounce and a half to two ounces of whiskey. I'm just gonna put a nice good ounce and a half in there, all right? Then, I do a rich syrup, so just under half an ounce. If you're gonna do a uh, normal simple syrup, I do maybe three quarters or under, okay? Pour it in there. Then, a little ice, not all the way, okay? And then just slowly massage the mints and the sugar and a little bit of the ice and the water in there, okay? And I'll do a little bit of a wonderful little fact for you here. In the 1938 Kentucky Derby, the, peop the people who are organizers of that wonderful, phenomenal horse race 
I've started noticing everybody kept on basically stealing the julep cups and, and mugs and glassware that the juleps came in. So rather than putting their foot down, they sort of embraced it. So as of 1939, the mint julep has become the symbol of the drink for the Kentucky Derby. And everybody brings out a special commemorative cup for it. Okay, and they're all still being stolen and some people actually still buy them. But it's gotten so big now that over the April period, that the Kentucky Derby is on for over hundreds of thousands of juleps are consumed. It's insane. So there we go. I'm now massaged the mint, the sugar and the bourbon together. Okay. And then I'm going to add some more crushed ice or pebble ice, whichever you want. Okay. And then we're going to just, if you notice, I'm trying not to touch the sides. Okay, because I don't want to warm it up with my fingers. All right, just do it there. Keep it going. And there it is, just a little bit more churning. Okay. And there it is, right. Put it down. a nice little straw which I will get I think one of these ones will be one in there get some more ice over the top like so get a nice lot of mint okay nice big bush all right really go nuts for this little squeeze put it in over the top like so okay like that and what I do love as well is putting icing sugar or, you know, just over the top like so. And there we go. And that is a mint julep. But most importantly of all, you know you've done a really good job because that should start icing over. Okay. Isn't that wonderful? And that is a mint julep. It's a wonderful drink, and in summer, actually almost any time of the year, but especially in summer, it's just fantastic. Oh, mmm. Mmm. Oh, God, that's so good. Oh, off. Get home safe.